What is up guys? My name is Brent Ruiz and welcome back to the channel. Guys, this is my first ever car review and I am super excited. I do want to give a big shout out to my friend Dan for letting me borrow this car in the first place. I've had it for a couple days now and it has been awesome to drive. I was considering just doing a straight up review of this car by itself. And I do think one of the best ways to do a car review is to just compare it directly apples to apples against one of its main competitors, one of its main rivals, another car that you might consider getting as opposed to the RS5. And I think one of those cars is the AMG C63 and the C63S. Now I do have the S version of the AMG, which I know is a step up above technically this car. The C63S does have more horsepower, about 60 horsepower more. And for that reason, I'm not going to compare the speed one versus the other. However, pretty much everything else is on the same level of this car. So it will make for a good review. So. First and foremost, let's get this thing started with the most important part of any car review, obviously the driving experience, the emotions that car driving gives you. And well, that's the most important part that I care about when I'm driving any type of car. And I'm about to find out what kind of feeling this RS5 gives me. So let's start her up and see how she does on one of my favorite driving roads here in Southern California. Once you put the car into dynamic mode, the valves do open up. By the way, guys, the owner of this car, Dan, he did fit a full Remus exhaust system onto this car, which I honestly am not that big of a fan of the sound of this car. I'll just tell you guys that straight up I do think the AMG has a strong edge when you compare the sound of both cars even with my AMG being stock versus this RS5 having that full Remus exhaust I still prefer the AMG sound Let's face it guys, the driving experience part of this review, half of that experience, half of any, I think, driving experience with any kind of sports car, the sound is a huge part of it. It has to be a huge part of it. So I'm going to take that into account when I drive this thing right now. So let's go ahead and do that. I am going to be driving this car for this part of the review in dynamic mode the entire time, just FYI. I always drive these cars with the paddles, but for purposes of this review, I'm going to start off by just letting it do its own shifts and see how that part of the car operates. So here we are on one of my favorite roads and I'm in dynamic mode and full automatic. I'm not using the paddles yet. The RS5 does not have a dual clutch transmission. It just has Audi standard uh, Tiptronic automatic transmission, which um, I actually do prefer it compared to the AMG's. The AMG does not have a dual clutch transmission either. So not just in automatic mode, but when you're operating the paddles, uh, that's where you really feel the difference in the speed of the shifts. The RS5's Tiptronic does shift faster than my AMG's. You see there's a slow car ahead of me, so I'm just gonna pull off for a quick second and talk a little bit more about the engine on this car. So this is fitted with a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6, which is kind of a sad thing because it used to be a 4.2 liter V8, which sounded a lot better than this thing does. Audi did get a lot of flack from uh, Audi fans when they made that change. But just like pretty much every other car manufacturer, that's the way the world is going. Your cars that previously were naturally aspirated are twin turbo or hybrid or fully electric now, which is sad, but um, hey, the performance has increased. So even though this has a much smaller displacement, um, it has actually six less horsepower. The V8s used to be 450 horsepower. This has 444 horsepower, but a lot more torque. So um, in terms of a zero to 60 time, this 2018 RS5 
is nearly a second faster than the V8. Okay, I think I've gotten enough space ahead of me. All right, first thing I need to do is uh, launch this thing, obviously. It's the first thing you guys gotta do in an all-wheel drive car. So I think to do that, we just gotta get it into dynamic mode, which it is already in. Well, I should probably get on the actual road. That should be a, that should be the first task at hand. <laughs> Great launch. <laughs> that is a great launch. Okay. We're still in automatic. I will be activating the paddles very soon, but let's just see how this shifts on its own. See, I would not recommend ever using automatic uh, shifting when you're driving hard in a canyon like this because it just shifted down for me in the middle of the turn, which I was not expecting it to do. So whenever you're driving roads like these, I do recommend you use the paddles. In order to activate manual mode, you just want to uh, shift this lever to the right. Okay, so I am in manual mode now, and we can finally ring out the gears a little bit. Other thing I don't like uh, that I just noticed right away is actually the shift pedals. They just feel a little bit too cheap. They're plastic, they're definitely plastic. Compared to the AMGs, which are a nice aluminum, they do feel better when you shift them. And these paddles, they actually remind me a little bit of McLaren's shift paddles and how they make that dumb noise. Like, I don't want to hear the shift paddle make noise when I shift it. Well, as the AMG, when you hit the shift paddle up or down, you don't hear anything, but you do get a nice tactile feel to it knowing that you've registered that shift. So if you have that good tactile feel, you don't really need to have it make a huge, annoying, kind of cheap sound. So yeah, not a big fan of the shift paddles, but not a big deal either way. And I just hit the shift paddle and didn't shift. Um, that's kind of weird. And that was red line, so. <laughs> So let's talk about the red line. This red line's only at 6,300. Oh, come on, guys. Good torque, though. Great, great power. When you're really on it, it is not slow. It takes hairpins so well. The all-wheel drive system is really cool. Um, I haven't really driven many all-wheel drive cars, but in turns like this, being able to just power out of them without much effort, without worrying about the back end dropping away from you is really really confidence inspiring that is a major advantage over the amg at least in terms of security on the road out of the out of the turns even like hairpin turns like that you could just mash the throttle and you're not losing any traction at all it's insane in the amg i would like be in a full-on drift of oversteer if i were to do that but this level of power on a car like this, it's really fun, especially in roads like this, because you can use like all of the car basically um, and not be like sketched out that you're about to hurl it into a ditch. <laughs> and I'm sorry for all the things that are sliding around. I'm full throttle right now in a turn and I have absolutely no worries that I'm going to lose traction at any time, which is awesome. It's an awesome feeling. The steering does feel kind of, I don't know, like, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's just because I'm so inexperienced with all-wheel drive cars, but... Yeah, it's it's a good car. Oh, see that? Right there, I kind of like... It was weird, like, I was in a very sweeping turn, but then when I shifted to the right, steering did something weird, kind of a floaty feeling. Not sure about that. So while coming out of a corner is great, um, turning into it, I don't like the steering feel as I turn into the corner. Well, you know, the previous gen of this car, people didn't like it because it had too much understeer. And while they have fixed it by putting in that twin turbo engine, which does save a ton of weight compared to the V8, actually it saves 31 kilograms, which is huge. Even though they've been able to save a ton of weight in the front with the engine, um, it's still located in pretty much the same place, so it's too ahead of the front wheels, which still gives it kind of that unpleasant understeer feel. And I do think it affects the turn-in as well. It is just not as precise as I would like it to be. I love how the uh, the colors change as you go up the tachometer here 
on the dash. That's a pretty cool feature. I love the temperature monitor for the tires. Absolutely awesome feature. I wish I did have that on the AMG. Yeah, you can totally just foot down on the pedal as you exit pretty much any turn and you're you're not gonna lose any kind of traction <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, definitely not the case in the AMG, but one can make the case that the AMG can be more fun if you, of course, know how to handle that power, handle that oversteer. The only downside, I'm driving pretty spirited and the thing that's not getting me is the sound. It's not there. I'm not hearing much at all, even with even with this Remus exhaust. I really want to try to get as much sound as I can out of this car. I haven't given up on you yet, RS5. Okay, the upshift crackle, not bad, not bad. I mean, it's not awful, but it could definitely use a lot more sound. Um, I can only imagine how quiet the stock exhaust is on this car. One more launch control. What do you guys say, just for old time's sake? Okay, okay, okay. All wheel drive launch control. Not too shabby. It's definitely been a while since I've done a proper launch control in like any all wheel drive car. Um, that's definitely one of the pluses of this RS5 over the AMG for sure. Because, like, if you were to do that in the AMG, um, all the AMG would do would just spin its wheels endlessly <laughs> until you reach like third gear at least um, which is part of the fun but being able to have that kind of traction off the line in this car is absolutely awesome so what do you guys prefer in a car do you prefer the all-wheel drive systems like this or something a little bit more playful like a rear wheel drive car like the AMG uh, let me know in the comments below because there's definitely advantages and disadvantages to both but in the end guys like it's just a preference thing honestly um, they're both great systems and they're both fun to drive no matter which way you look at it so um, <laughs> let me know what you guys like better in the comments okay so number two the number two thing I want to talk about in this review is how well this car does on a day-to-day -day basis because after all it really is like a sports car that you can drive every day, right? That's what this bracket of cars is all about. The M4, the C63, the RS5. This trio of cars is supposed to deliver not only a really great driving experience when you want it to, but it has to be comfortable at the same time on a day-to-day -day basis. And out of those three cars, this is the car that has more of that grand touring GT feel. If we were to talk about these two cars, on only on strictly a daily driver basis i think the rs5 probably comes out on top for a few different reasons number one it just has a ton of nice technology that just lends itself to being an awesome daily driver the virtual cockpit display right here that you get in this car is awesome i think it is really the leader in this class now of course the new generation of amgs have definitely caught up but since we're reviewing this car directly against my 2017 AMG, well, this dash really blows it out of the water. So it's a fully digital dashboard other than on the far right here, the fuel gauge, and on the far left, the temperature gauge. Now, one of the most awesome things about this dashboard is the Google Maps feature, which you do have to pay for. It is actually 50 bucks a month to get that with the Wi-Fi package. But once you have it, it pretty much replaces your phone when you're navigating around town and to different destinations. All you need to do to get to it is just to use this arrow on the steering wheel, change the view on the left side of this dash from playback to note to map. So you can have the map optionally only on the left side of the dash or 
you can press the view button on the steering wheel to make it take over the entire dashboard, which I'll do now, which just looks absolutely awesome. Completely replaces your phone navigation, I think. And the way that I have it set up right now with the RPM gauge on the bottom left and the mode that I'm in, and the speedometer on the lower right showing me how I'm always keeping it under 55, uh, well, I think that's the perfect setup for the dashboard here. It just looks absolutely awesome. The other thing that I love about this dash, and I think it's one of the options you can get to basically extend the functionality of the tire pressure monitors. Not only will they tell you the PSI, but as you'll see here, I just press the view button again. It'll tell you the temperature of each tire, which is something that you usually will only get like on supercars these days. But being able to know the temperature of your tires is super, super important, especially if you're about to take it on an aggressive drive. Let's talk about some of the technology in these cars. In the RS5, it has the adaptive cruise control feature, which is a pretty important option that I had to get on the AMG. The adaptive cruise control system is obviously something that is very, very handy to use, especially when you're in traffic. Um, you don't even have to put your foot on the pedal at all. It'll just do everything for you. You can, of course, adjust the distance with the stock here on the left side of the steering wheel to let the system know how far you want to keep away from the car in front. Now, in conjunction with the ACC, you also have a lane assist or steering assist in this car as well, which is, again, really, really helpful. It's basically like borderline Tesla. You can keep not only your foot off the pedal, but you can also remove your hands entirely from the steering wheel. In this car, it lets you keep your hands off the wheel for about 10 or 15 seconds until it starts beeping at you, uh, telling you to put some pressure on the wheel. Make sure you're not falling asleep on the road. Let's talk about these seats. They're actually the sport seats. They're very comfortable. They're a great compromise between having something comfortable and something sporty. They have a good amount of bolstering. And in comparison to the AMGs, uh, I think the AMGs, because I have the sport seats on there, they're actually a little bit more snug, definitely. They do have a little bit more bolstering, which I love. I mean, I'm a big fan of race seats in like any car. So whenever we can get something like very, very sporty, I love, especially in cars like these, but the one thing my AMG does not have that this car does have, which I'm actually pretty jealous of, are massaging seats. Even in the sport seat option, you get massaging seats. And of course they have on here on the front, you get the heated seats as well. Mm. Pretty, pretty luxurious. And that gives another point to this car for the daily driver category. In terms of comfort, this RS5 definitely is ticking a lot of those boxes. However, there are a couple items in regards to the seats where the AMG does excel. Number one, I have had some issues with the automatic uh, seat belt uh, retractor when you turn on the car and it automatically ret retracts so you can reach it easier. The seat belt has actually completely missed the apparatus. So the, the apparatus moves, but the seat belt doesn't come with it. So uh, I think that's actually a problem on a lot of cars with this option. But anyway, that's number one. And the second advantage that the AMG has in regards to the seats, which is probably just an option, is when you want to get somebody in the back and you pull the seats, the front seats forward, um, the AMG's seats actually retract forward automatically and these you have to do it manually. Another thing in the interior of this car that I do prefer on the RS5 versus the AMG is the way that they've done the AC controls. And pretty much all of the controls here in the front of the car, they're very well thought out. I love how they did this. The digital display and like the semi-touch controls on these buttons for the AC controls are absolutely awesome. I have never seen that before on any other car and I do prefer them a lot more than the ones on the AMG. A big problem I have with the AMG's AC controls is, and maybe there's like a special shortcut that I just have not figured out yet, but so say one night you're driving the car, it's cold at night and you want, you know, the, the AC controls all the way up to max heat, right? So you go all the way up to like 84 degrees or whatever is the highest setting for the car. And then the next day, it's you know sunny and then it's nice hotter day. Well, since on the previous day you had it all the way up to 84, now since you wanna go all the way down to 60, you have to press the lower temperature button like 
all those multiple times to get down all the way. It has definitely been annoying for me in the AMG. Anyway, this system is a lot better because it uses the rotary dials where you can just with one of these motions go from coldest setting to the hottest setting, which is really, really nice. And by the way, guys, when I'm talking about the AC controls, I'm talking about the ones here that you can access directly and right away here in the center console, not any that might be available inside the screen here. So there is a way to do that, but there are a few steps that you have to take to get there in the first place. You have to click the menu button here and then you get into the temperature screen here. And then once you're in the temperature screen, you have to click down again here to activate this part of the screen. So I'll do that now. And only now can you use this knob here to switch the temperature with that rotary dial, which I love. So if we had this rotary dial here somewhere physically, that would be perfect, but that's what the Audi RS5 has. So that's why I love that a lot better than this. And the other really cool party trick about these controls up here in the front is that when you just like slightly touch with the tip of your finger one of these buttons, it'll reveal the settings that are under that button. So you can know before you even touch it if you wanna go up or down. So great job Audi on this interface. I love it. It is really, really well done. And I do, I do actually wish I had it on the AMG. Okay, so let's talk about the suspension feel real quick. There is actually a really big comparison to be made to the AMGs, which I felt right away. Whenever this car goes over bumps, it doesn't really matter which setting you're in, whether it be comfort, dynamic, or automatic. I can tell that whenever it goes over bumps, it is a lot more floaty in the air. So you get like longer hang time, if you know what I mean, when you go over a bump, as opposed to the AMG, where if you go over a bump, it's just a lot more harsh but it ends faster. There's less hang time, if you know what I mean. I'm trying to make that analogy, but I'm not, I'm not sure if it's working or not, but um, I hope you guys know what I mean. So the RS5 does feel a little bit more floaty, which might be better in terms of having like more comfort on longer drives. The AMG does feel like it has a more like stiffer suspension, but like highly strong stiffer suspension so that when it does go over bumps, it gets them out of the way faster, even though it is a little bit more harsh. Pulling off the road real quick, I'm going to give you guys just a quick overview of the interior of this car, and we'll compare it straight up to the AMG. Okay, just taking a look inside. First of all, this car has a good amount of carbon fiber trim on it um, all along the dashboard here in the center console right there, as well as on the door panels on both sides, of course, which looks absolutely awesome and then we have some nice red stitching with some leather pieces here on the armrest and the nice suede alcantara so while i love the combination of the carbon fiber trim with some suede here um, i just cannot deal with this plastic which you can find on like all your entry level cars that cost twenty five thousand or less this plastic is everywhere and that i don't think that can fly on a car that MSRP is out at $95,000, as you can see on the window sticker here. Um, yeah, this car did start at $69,900, but with options that it has, it came out at a final sticker price of 94,000 and change. You guys tell me though, like, do you think it's fine to have this cheap looking material on a car that costs nearly $100,000? I would say not, but uh, you guys tell me. As for the steering wheel, the steering wheel is a flat bottom, which some people hate, some people love it, but the legroom inside is really, really good. So I'm not sure that this flat bottom steering wheel is actually necessary, but either way, it doesn't bother me. The steering wheel itself is nice. I love it. Um, it has a nice sporty compact feel to it. It is wrapped in perforated leather. And then here in the middle, you have your standard controls. In plastic, my 2017 AMG also has them in plastic here, but on the new generation of the AMG, they are in a nicer aluminum finish. Moving on to the center of the dashboard here, the screen is actually a very similar size to the one in my AMG, so no real clear advantage there, but I love the carbon fiber trim all along the dashboard. You have your Quattro badge right there. And in the center console, we have this lever, which um, I wasn't really a fan of at the beginning when I first started using this, just because it doesn't have much play to it. You can't really go like far up or far down. But after using it a little bit longer, I did come to like it after I got more used to it. I do actually prefer this style versus the one in the AMG, which they give you on a stalk on this side of the steering wheel, which I mean like using a stalk right there on the steering wheel to change the drive mode of your transmission, that's like 
I would have never expected that on a sporty AMG. I would expect that only like on pickup trucks and older cars. So I didn't even realize that that's how AMGs were. They had them on the stock like that. But um, yeah, um, the RS5, having it here in the center console as opposed to having a stock on the steering wheel um, is definitely uh, the better move for me. And as I mentioned before, the shifter paddles, this clicking sound, that's a no-go for me. On the AMG, they are made out of a more nicer feeling and nicer looking brushed aluminum uh, versus this uh, plasticky and not too quality feeling shift paddle. So definitely a point in the AMG's favor on that. Let's check out some more of the seats here. So here's the magic button. I was talking about the massaging seats. Even on the sports seats, you get it, which is awesome. I wish I had that on the AMG. So I actually took some time to sit myself back here in the back seats, and I did compare it directly to how much room I have in the AMG. And there's actually a little bit more headroom compared to the AMG when I sit in these seats. So, but other than that, they're very, very similar. And I really love this lit up door sill with the RS5 logo and the accompanying Audi Sport logo underneath the door, which lights up as you can see right there. I'm not sure if it's an option or not on the AMG, but either way, that's pretty awesome. Wrapping up the video, I had a great time with the 2018 Audi RS5. Every car has its pros and cons. And at the end of the day, you just have to decide which one lends itself to your needs and your desires. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this segment of car, it's really a battle between these big three, the RS5, the C63, and the M4. After driving the RS5, it is pretty clear where it is positioned amongst those other two. The RS5 is really the safest car you can buy out of this bunch. Imagine a meter that had three settings, comfort or GT at one end, and sportiness at the other. The RS5, I think, would be at the comfort end, the AMG in the middle, and the M4 at the sporty end. The RS5 is, in my opinion, the best daily driver and the best grand tourer out of these three. It does all of those daily driver categories really, really well. There's no doubt about that. However, it does neglect to tick one of the most important boxes in my list, the emotion you get from driving the car. Now, the reason I prefer the AMG when it comes to driving emotion is that when you flip that switch from your, you know, your luxurious daily driver in comfort mode, and you flip it to sport plus or even race mode, the attitude that the car gives back to you really, really makes you want to drive it hard and loud. And that is where you can have a lot of fun. Not to mention how easy it is to be more playful with the car, get the back end loose sometimes, have a little bit more fun. So my final verdict is this, when you really want a car that's an awesome daily driver that you'll actually use as your daily driver, that you can also take through a canyon on the way back home from work and have fun, and you prefer the all-wheel drive system versus the rear-wheel drive system, the RS5 is a car for you.